Hi friend, I am so excited that you're here to check out Her Restored Spirit podcast. If you've gone through something that has left you broken spirited, maybe it's a divorce, loss of a spouse, or even a child, loss of a job, whatever it is, I know there is restoration in your future. I'm a widowed mom, and I remember what it feels like to emerge from the fog to discover that my loss is not the center of my story, but it actually instilled in me a new hope, a new understanding of faith, and a new strengthening in my heart, soul, and motherhood. I have finally understood that God has taken my test and formed it into my testimony, and that's why I'm here with you. I want you to step into your purpose, into a newfound joy, and to turn a new page in your book because I believe you are on the brink of full restoration, unlocking a confidence that you didn't know was inside you, and understanding how to live more fruitfully with purpose, joy, and permission to be washed in possibility. It's time, friend, to reclaim your restored spirit. Hey, welcome back to Her Restored Spirit Podcast. My name is Tammy and I'm your host. And today we are wrapping up the series, Unhook Yourself. I realized that I actually have another like 10 to 15 things that I could use for Unhook Yourself. So many different ideas and things that we need to remove the grip of something, unhook yourself from something to see the bigger picture to give yourself room to grow, to have grace, to um, try things that you've never done before, or to just do things differently, to try it out, to grow, to, to be different. And today that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to wrap up the series with one that I, I really think it's so important and it's unhooking ourselves from the way things have always been done. Now, there are times But there are things that, you know, the way they've always been done is the best way Um, or it's the only way. Well, not the only way, but it's the best way Um, for riding a bike. For example, Um, you ride the bike the same way. How many times have you tried to kick off with your non-dominant foot or the way that you're something different than your normal pattern and it not go so well? Um, Another one, brushing your teeth. I brush my teeth and floss the same way every time. I go from one side to the other. I go, you know, top first, then bottom. Like I I have a pattern that I've been doing for years and I do it the same way every time because it works for me. I do it so I can daydream. I do it so I can listen to my brain prime. I do it so I can, well, because I don't have to think about it. It's just a muscle memory. And how many things do we do by muscle memory that, are actually not helpful. Um, Even when I drink my tea, I try to drink it with, you know, not just, well, another example is when we're driving, how many times do you get home and you're like, I don't remember driving. I, I don't remember the path that we took. You do it so much that it's ingrained in you and you, and it's, you don't have to think about it. And there's some danger in that because if you don't, if you're not present, if you just stick with the things that you do things the way that they've always been done, simply because that's the way it's been done, it doesn't allow for growth. It doesn't allow for you to, um, well, like it doesn't allow for you to, to grow in a way that you need to grow or shift or change or add some excitement. There's so many things that we do. And I remember there's a story um, and I don't remember the whole thing, but like a lady who is having a Bible study and, or studying the Bible and she hooks her cat to the, the bedpost before she studies the Bible. And finally someone came up like, why do you do that? She goes, well, I don't know. My mom always did it. So that's the way I did it. Um, And then she's like, I wonder why my mom used to do that. And she went back and asked her mom and she was like, well, I did that because the cat would always, as soon as I opened my Bible, the cat would um, jump on the pages and I couldn't actually do my Bible study. So it actually had nothing to do with the Bible study or reading other than the fact that her mom did it. Her mom did it because it was what she needed to do in order to accomplish the task. And that's one of the areas that I want you to start thinking about. What things do I do simply because they've always been done? And 
sometimes we get these ideas that, and we're afraid of change. I love change and I also hate change. Um, there's some things that I wish could stay the same. Um, even with how many times I've moved in my life, I tend to put furniture the same way. I have a friend who constantly is rearranging her house. Um, it's a big deal if I put up a new picture. Like I, once things are there, I, I don't really change that very often. It's changing now that I'm gonna be staying in this house for a lot longer than I've ever stayed in a house before. But overall, like when you look at change, change can be good. Change is necessary. Um, let's face it, if trees did not shed their leaves, if we didn't have fall, we wouldn't have spring. If we did not, if those, if those trees held on to their leaves, we would not have fruit. We would not have new growth. The trees would not get bigger. The trees would probably die because it doesn't have that cycle. It needs to drop the trees in order to have room that drop the leaves. You know what I meant. Sorry. You know what I meant. Has to, you know, in order to, to grow, to change, to shift, to go to the next season, it has to shed something from the current season. And everything has a place. Everything has a time. And girlfriend, some things that you're doing, it needs to go. You need to unhook yourself from things that they've, it's always been done just because it's always been done that way, because it's easier, because it's safe. And we've talked about what safe does for our brain. Our brains love safe. It does not like change. Our brains do not like to try something new. And why? It's because it doesn't understand it. It doesn't get it. It doesn't see how it's going to be good. And so we have to show it. We have to tell it that. We have to show how it's going to be good, how we can succeed. And it's, you know, our, our brains want to keep us right where we are. And, and I'm talking now about like simple things, you know, like changing um, how you brush your teeth or changing, um, you know, some things that we can change, like how we dress. Now that I'm in my forties, I have no desire to dress like I was in my twenties. I, I actually think I dress better than I did in my twenties. I was really afraid of what, like, I didn't want to stand out. I didn't wear a lot of colors. Let's face it. Much of my twenties, I wore a uniform. So I, I was blended in with everybody else and I was in camouflage. So you couldn't see me anyway. Um, but we, we grow, we change, we shift and releasing ourselves from those things, like how you've always, if you want to wear a, a certain dress, wear it. It's so interesting. I have a friend who was like, Hey, how does this look on me? Can I pull this off? And I'm like, do you love it? She's like, well, yeah. And I was like, do you feel confident in it? She goes, well, if it looks good, I'm like, well, do you think it looks good? And she's like, yeah. I was like, well, I think it looks adorable. I think it looks great. And I think you can rock it. If you have the confidence to rock it, rock it. I, I tried something new last year where I, during the summer, cause I, I wanted to wear dresses, wanted to wear more. Like I am super white. I don't tan. I don't tan at all. And so when I wear shorter dresses or what, you know, midi length or T length or, you know, right above the knee, like I have some bare white legs. And so I would not for years, I would not, I would wear jeans even in the summer, even though it's Oklahoma summer, simply because I'm like, well, I'm just too white to wear these, to, to wear a dress like this. Like it's not, it's not who I am. And then I started growing a little bit and I was like, what do you mean? It's not who I am. I want to be somebody who wears dresses. So last year, last summer, I wore a dress almost every day, almost every day I wore a dress and I loved it. It was cooler. It was more comfortable. It was the lazy way of getting dressed because they were, um, you know, like they were, they were super comfortable. It was like wearing yoga pants. Um, and I liked the way I felt in them. So I made that change. I became the person who wore dresses, shorter dresses. And you know what? I'm like, my white legs are white, my white legs. I'm in my forties. There's not changing. And it feels better. And when I took the confidence to wear it, 
I had my friends be like, well, you look really great. Oh, I can't even, I, you know, you can't even tell your legs are white. I'm like, okay, well, we won't go that far. But you know what I'm saying is that you have, if you want to change the way you dress, the way people see you, the way, um, if you want to change your friends, your hobbies, your, if you're feeling there's a change inside of you. And let me give you some of the things that I wrote down. Like here's 10 ways to know you're, you're kind of stuck or you're feeling that need to change. So you're getting anxious about it. And one is you take longer than necessary to complete tasks. If it takes you longer because you are trying to hem and haw and you want to change. So if you're noticing that it's taking longer to complete tasks, it may be a sign that there's a change coming or a change needed. Um, you feel exhausted and drained after working on something for too long. You will probably need to change the way things are done. There might be a better way of doing it. You lack the motivation or energy to pursue new ideas or possibilities. If you want, if you have that desire and you stuff it down, you're going to lose the motivation and the energy to try anything new because your brain is going to be like, oh, I like the feeling of just staying right here. So that new idea, we're just going to stuff that down and it's going to be exhausting because you're fighting against what you need and you need a refresh. You need a change. You need to unhook yourself from the things that things have the way things have always been done. See, you start procrastinating excessively. You avoid certain things. This is one of my favorite things. Um, and when I start avoiding things, now it's a cue that something needs to change. Why am I avoiding it? What, am, what aspect of it am I in, avoiding? And those are the questions that I ask myself. Um, you're unable to break out of old habits of, and patterns of thinking and doing things. That thought of, well, this is who I am. I can never change. I wish, I long for something different. I wish that I could be more like that. I wish that was possible for me. If you start wishing, hoping, dreaming, thinking, and praying for a change, but then don't take the steps. There's something there. It's incongruent. It is, there's no harmony in your body. And that desire that is, is there. And again, we talked about something similarly, like changing the way you dress. I will say though, that changing the way you dress and that, that confidence it feels, it gives you a boost in, in who you are and how you feel. So go for it. I cut my hair short. You know, I was down, um, I cut about eight inches off my hair, I think is what we worked out, maybe six to eight, seven inches anyway. Um, and I feel great about it. I was kind of nervous when it was happening. Um, one, because I had a new hairstylist. Um, but two, it's, well, will I miss my longer hair? And sometimes I do, but overall I don't. I love it. It's a change that my brain was like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But then my heart was like, yeah, it's going to give you a, the change that you're looking for. It's going to give you that refresh, that confidence boost. That's just, that can, even a control, like, the ability to make a big change, it allows you to make other changes in your life. So let's go back to our list. Is difficulty staying focused on tasks at hand and completing them in a timely manner? If you're if you're having difficult time staying on task, that could mean that something, there's something that something that's not right with it and then it needs to change. And it could just be the symbol like folding your napkins in a different way, or it could mean that you no longer need to accomplish that task. Maybe that's a task that you need to hand off to someone else, delegate. You need to set down. Um, maybe it's, you know, when you're, you're going to a job and I had a job that I, that I loved working for a nonprofit organization, but there was something about it that it was not the right position for me anymore. And it was not because of a bad thing. And it was not because it didn't, wasn't good. It wasn't because I wasn't doing a good job. And it wasn't because I didn't like the people I worked with, but there was, God was calling me some to somewhere different. And if I would have stayed there, I would have been out, in, out of obedience. And so like staying focused on the task that I had at the job, once I recognized that I needed to change, it was so hard to do those day-to-day -day things. Because all I could dream about, all I could think about is what was coming next. So use that as an indication that something is changing. 
a feeling that you what you've done isn't good enough or doesn't measure up to your expectations for yourself. When it's time to level up, when it's time to upgrade, when it's time to shift and change and and it could be anything. We start to feel like we aren't in, align in um, alignment with ourselves. We feel like there's more. And that's what I want you to pay attention to. Do you have this feeling that this is not really good enough? You've, you've mastered this. You've looked at this. And now it's like, it's time to either level up or change. See, the inability to think outside the box and innovate in, in any area of your life. Again, this goes down with, it goes with, that when, if you're wanting change and you shove it down, there's going to be more things. And so you lose that creativity because you're actually blocking it. You lose that ability to creative, to come up with creative ideas because you're so in, you're in autopilot doing the same task the same way. Um, going back to the teeth brushing, a lot of, a lot of people will say, if you want to start making a change, if you want is if you will start brushing your teeth with your opposite hand, that changes the way that your brain brushes its teeth. It's going to change the way your, your brain actually will have to focus. I'm a lefty. So if I have to do it with my right hand, like I have to focus intently, it takes intention, purpose. Um, it takes my, like all of my focus. So something as simple as that, and they're saying, okay, well, what about that experience? let me up. What about that experience was difficult? Which part? Why did I do that? But it gives your brain that jolt of, okay, I can do something different. And I didn't die. Because like I've talked about before, our brains do not know the difference between an emotional threat and a physical threat. Let's face it, brushing your teeth with the wrong hand, you will not die doing that. I think I can say that pretty boldly, um, that statement, and it'll be as close to 100% true as possible. You know, something may happen while you're brushing your teeth, but I can't help that. Um, but it's an emotional threat because it changes the way you do things. It's not a physical threat, but your, your brain, your body will react to it the same way it will. And so feeling like there's no room for growth and improvement. If you're feeling like there's no room for growth, you want it, but there's no time, there's no margin, there's no rest. You don't have the funds, you don't have the ability, you don't know how, you're stuck, you're just, you manage life instead of living it. That is a sign that growth is exactly, you need to unhook yourself, like remove those old ways of thinking and find, like do whatever you can do to get to that moment, get to that where you can grow. And then finally, there's a sense that nothing you do matters in the grand scheme of things. Girl, what you do matters. When you start feeling like you don't matter, please let the big warning lights go off. Please recognize that as a sign that something needs to change and you can shift. You can change small things changing your daily routines, changing how you look at things, changing what you're, how you think about things. And I want to talk more about this because a lot of things of what we need to unhook ourselves from is the way we see ourselves. The way that we do things that doing things the way they've always been done, because we believe about ourselves, the same thing we've always thought that I can't ever achieve things, or I'm not worthy of this, or I don't deserve this, or I'm not capable, or I don't know enough, or I don't have enough. Um, or if you knew what I did in the past, or if you knew what I've been through, you would know that I didn't deserve this, or I don't deserve anything good. These are all lies. And if you take one thing from this podcast is that those lies are not how you should run your life. They are not things that you should hook yourself to 
that oh those old stories oh you are a new creature when you come to Christ you are new your old those old things are are thrown away just like the trees shed their leaves you can shed those old, old thoughts and if you don't know how to reach out because I can show you how I can show you, walk you through the step-by-step -step process. But the biggest thing is I want you to recognize that those are lies and they're, they're not true. So here's some questions that I'd like you to ask yourself as you're trying, as you're processing this and as you're thinking of like, okay, are there old things that I'm hooked to? That I, that I need to get out of my life, that I need to unhook myself from to allow creativity and allow excitement, to allow joy, to allow happiness, to allow love, to allow friendship, to allow any of these things, these external, these, these needs to come into your life. And, and these are some of these questions that I just want you to ask. Like you can journal about them. You can ask them out loud. A lot of these, when I'm driving by myself, I will just have a discussion with myself and be like, why am I doing this? What am I getting from it? And so am I only doing this because it's the way it's always been done? Am I only dressing this way because it's safe and I've always dressed this way? Do I always wear black and white because I love it or because it's my way of not standing out in a crowd or standing out in a crowd? You go either way. Am I, am I who I am because I don't want to rock the boat because I don't want to change. I don't want, I don't want others to think negatively of me or I don't want them to, to, um, I don't know how they would feel if I say I want to change one of my boundaries or I want to, or I'm not living out one of my values or priorities. Is there an old story? that is playing, that's keeping me doing the same thing in and out? Is there an old story that's keeping me believing that I'm not worthy or capable of change? Or even to take a step further, that I am not worthy or capable of getting what I really want, the desires of my heart? Am I worthy of change? What am I afraid will happen if I change something? And a lot of times this one is an easy one, especially my Enneagram sixes. What will happen? What am I afraid? Will it, you know, what is the worst case scenario? Well, friend, what is the best case scenario? What could possible, what becomes possible when I change something? And then it's the, what most likely will change? What will shift if I change something? Because it's typically not worst case or best case. It's typically somewhere in the middle, but we don't allow ourselves to think about the best case scenario or even the like positive side. We go straight to all of the worst case scenarios and all the bad things that could happen. And a lot of those are just there. They are that we have no evidence that they're true or they could be true. It's keeping us safe. So friend, don't hesitate because you don't know the outcome. You can always go back to doing things the same way. But what are you giving up by not saying yes to yourself and growing and trying something new, discovering who you are? And I heard a quote yesterday. This is don't let your present, don't lose your presence by giving power to your past. We have so many stories in our past, stories that make us react today, ways that we don't really want to react. Old stories, old patterns, old actions. We don't have to lose our present and our future by giving too much power to the past. So I want you to think about that. And as you're thinking about that, because one of the things that when I was trying to grow is I didn't, I didn't, there's so much information out there. 
so much, so much. And yet I didn't know what was for me. I didn't know what will work. I have a group that it's discovering you and we're going to go step by step through this process of figuring out where we're hooked to, finding out our strengths, finding out our weaknesses, finding out our fears, understanding where they came from, and then giving yourself that privilege of saying, okay, what do I want to do with it now? Who do, do I really want to be? What do I really want to do? What is God highlighting for me? And what is he calling me to? How can I be the best version of myself for my family? How can I come alive again and get out of this numbness that I feel as I manage my day-to-day -day life and take my kids to here and there and so they can live their best lives? And yet I feel like I am just managing or being pulled through mine. From that is not a good enough life. That we are, time is our most precious resource. Every moment you stay stuck in that feeling is, is one that's gone for good. How much more life would it give your family if you came back and you took control, you took, you, you decided that you were going to have hobbies and show them how to enjoy life instead of the, just driving them from place to place and listening to podcasts about change, but never changing. So this group is for you and it's a lot of fun. We do some, like I said, step-by-step, step. I will not leave you. I will, I will give you the tools and then walk you through how to use them. We will implement them and then we will start to see changes. We talk about the things that we're hooked to that we want to change. We talk about those things and we bring them to light. You will figure out a few things that you didn't, some thoughts that you never even realized you had. Those old stories that are playing on repeat, those, the negative bias that you're like, well, I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. We'll figure that out. I promise you. And with that, you could say no. You can listen to this and say, you know, it's not really for me. I can, I can, I can figure it out some other way. There's so many books. How many books have you read? How many I have read? I am, well, I'm I'm a book lover and I I read a lot of books and I also collect books. Um, but I love learning. And then I would put books down. I would read them and I'm like, okay, feel good. Put it down and then not implement it or, or try to implement it. It would last a couple of weeks, maybe even a month. And then those old habits and patterns would creep back in. You can allow that to happen. And I guarantee that in four months from now, six months from now, a year from now, you're going to be in the same place and possibly worse because you knew you had an opportunity to say yes to yourself and you didn't take it. You knew that there was something that could help you, someone. This is not a watch this video and implement this. It is I walk with you on this journey. You're with like-minded women who may not have the same stories as you on the outside, but when you we start cutting through all the BS, cutting through all of the, and get down to the core of it, we all have the same needs. And this is why you shouldn't do it alone because you can see that you're not alone. That, and it's so much easier to see in someone else being like, girl, of course you're worthy of this. You not see how amazing you are, but we can't see it in ourselves. We have our blind spots. And in a group, we're able to show them gently, tell each other about them. And then we're able to help each other put them down. Do not wait to do this. Do not wait because when you wait and you say no to yourself, when you say, no, I, I don't think this, I can do it on my own girl. If you could do it on your own, you would have done it already. This is, that is something that I have learned why I will always be in a coaching group because I have my own blocks. I have, um, I was called out recently because I fell back into an old pattern, an old way of thinking. And my, my friend Rihanna was like, is that really what you want to think? 
I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't even realize that I was back in there. Let me, let me shift my brain prime and let's do some matrix work and get that out. But I immediately knew I had the tools to fix it. So with that, do not hesitate. Reach out to me, DM me, email me, get on my calendar. Because you can't, there's not a button you can click on my website because I'm actually very protective over who's in the group. I make sure that it is it is going to work and it's the, the women who want the change and are ready for it. So the only way is by talking to me. I'm not that, I'm, I'm, I promise you, I'm, I'm not evil or hard to talk to you. It's gonna, I show up just as I am now. And I just, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions to see what's possible, see what's getting in your way and see what we can do about it. And then see what's, what comes next, that's it. So with that, friend, get on my calendar. You won't regret it. You won't regret one moment of it. And I, I cannot wait to reach out to you. To, I can't wait to connect with you and talk to you about that. So with that, choose joy until joy chooses you. Bye for now.